reporter from the South. I'm Laura Prada from the Telesur Studios in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. And the Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro considers success the first meeting to promote dialogue held in Montevideo. As part of his participation in military exercise in Sulia State, the President ratified his commitment to all the initiatives to facilitate the dialogue between Venezuelans. In this regard, he supported the four-phase initiative presented by governments of Mexico, Uruguay, Bolivia and the 14 member countries of the community of Caribbean states, CARICOM. The first meeting to help and improve a dialogue for peace in Venezuela has been a success. All the support to the plan of the four phases that is proposed in the mechanism of Montevideo, integrated by the government of Mexico, Uruguay, and the 14 governments of the Caribbean. And the Foreign Minister of Uruguay and Mexico, Rodolfo Nimnoan Mazzero Ebrard, held a preparation meeting for the International Conference on Venezuela. During a press conference, both diplomats insisted that dialogue between the parties is the solution for the political situation in the Bolivarian country. These talks should come without conditions and under the non-interference principle. The first thing is to talk. If there is a communication, we cannot do anything. Communication is essential, then negotiation will come, and finally, the implementation. I think that the more conditions we impose, the more difficult the dialogue gets to be carried out. If conditions are imposed, parties should agree, and non-intervention is important. And the spokesperson for the United Nations Secretary General, Stefan Dujaric, confirmed Antonio Guterres' support to the meeting on Venezuela that will take place this Thursday in Montevideo, Uruguay. According to Dujaric, Guterres has contacted the promoters of the meeting to discuss the main issues that the United Nations supports the efforts to find a political situation in Venezuela and has offered to mediate between Venezuela's government and the opposition. And political groups, social movements and trade unions marched outside the United States Embassy in Argentina. They've rejected the Cop d'Etat in Venezuela orchestrated by the USA. Despite the repression from the government of Mauricio Macri, which is trying to hide the Argentine people's support for the constitutional president of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro, and the Bolivarian Revolution, hundreds of protesters demanded the end of aggression against the land of Chávez and Bolívar. We're marching for Venezuela's sovereignty and for Nicolás Maduro. We think that you have to respect the mandate of the recently elected president. What is happening in Venezuela is ridiculous. And if there's a situation there, it's because it was provoked by the United States and Venezuelan economic groups that make the people go hungry. It's a lie that the people who are suffering are those that have left. Those who are suffering are those who stayed, saying to the U.S., that there's no place for their plans in the region. According to the activists, the thousands of cops organized across all the continents of the world by the United States, the invasions, the bombing of civilians, and the support for the worst authoritarian regimes mean that Washington has no right to talk about dictatorships and human rights in Venezuela. We are seeing how they are trying to articulate a position in the European Union, how the cartel Lima countries are trying to formulate opinion in each of our countries. So we have to take to the streets, not just in Latin America, but all over the world. We have to show that the Venezuelan people aren't alone, and that the real enemy in common is United States imperialism. The leaders of distinct political groups, social movements and trade unions call for the march to demand dialogue, as proposed by Uruguay, Mexico, and the Vatican, as well as to avoid the tragedy caused by the North American intervention.
Apoyamos la reunión. We support the meeting called by Mexico and Uruguay, which is going to take place in Montevideo, February 7th. We are going to actively participate in this process because Latin American peace depends on how things go following this provocation and whether we can stop North American aggression against Venezuelan people and President Nicolás Maduro. Mauricio Macri's political interference was anonymously rejected. In the whole history of the Argentine Republic, no president has ever intervened in internal affairs of another country, including during the dictatorships. We've aided in each government peaceful solutions to conflicts. We can't throw NAFTA to the fire like Donald Trump or like Bolsonaro, both of whom are psychopaths. We demand that our president Mauricio Macri reverses his totally incorrect decision. We ask the same of the international community. There was an interesting poll today which revealed that the Argentine people want a solution through dialogue. The protester unraveled the lie that the Argentine people supports a blockade president Juan Guaido and rejected his action as illegitimate, illegal and violent. They say they will continue to act to ensure that Latin America remains at peace. And on Tuesday, Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro launched the country's transport mission at Caracas Metro System. The program has the goal of better connecting the country on a national level. He also announced the creation of the Experimental University of Transport. To boost land, sea and air transport, he also said a new public transport system will be created using Venezuela's research and innovation. <clears throat> Time for a first break. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Celestor English and at Laura Pitlesser. Stay with us. An occasion to enjoy the cultural diversity that defines our South American essence. Come along to find out the story behind these personalities, traditions, and artistic expressions that unite us as a whole. Real Lives. Friday. Only on Telesur. back. The former president of Costa Rica, Oscar Arias, is facing a third accusation of rape. A female activist is accusing him. A local media made public this new accusation against Arias. The attack would had taken place in capital San Jose during 2014 on a meeting. Arias has already been accused by other two women for sexual abuses. The former president rejects those accusations. And this Wednesday, the president of IT, Jovenel Moise, decreed economic emergency state in the Caribbean country. The resolution was set as agreed to the reduction of costs to acquire first need products in order to favor households and to strengthen the social projects. The head of Haitian state also approved suspending until September 30th custom tax exception with the objective to improve the state's operational level. Let's remember that Haiti faces a monetary deficit that reached more than $128 million in the last month. 
and the Cuban President Miguel Díaz-Canel participated this Wednesday in the Cuban TV program Roundtable to inform alongside with other authorities of the government on the works of recovery and the response of the government and the people regarding the attention given to the people and the assets affected after the tornado that hit Havana last week. I believe that we have lived intense days of work, discipline, solidarity and cooperation in which there has been permanent call to the sensibility of the officials so that or they create those annoyances and also a call for the patience and understanding of the population because the damage was massive and cannot be recovered in a day. We will be working hard for months with the certainty that the 500th anniversary will take place. And international organizations in Colombia are calling on President Ivan Duque to stop the continued murders of social leaders. Let's learn more of what's going on in Colombia. In the face of the wave of assassinations of social leaders, human rights organizations and experts have conducted a study to determine the patterns of crimes against the Afro-descent, peasant and indigenous populations. The phenomenon of the killings of social leaders is rising at the hands of local criminal gangs. They have links with armed groups on a national level and are outsourced so they can commit those murders and authorities register them as common crimes without examining that they have a direct connection with illegal armed groups. The study, called Killing of Social Leaders on the Post Agreement, also reveals the apparent participation of the Colombian state. Prosecutors have put ELM first, but we don't see them as the biggest aggressors. In the report, we registered eight cases of assassinations at the hands of the ELN and two by the EPL, while 11 leaders were killed by the members of the army. And according to reports, three leaders were killed by the police. Since the agreement, there have been multiple armed actors that have occupied territories where social investment and peace agreements have never arrived. The state has failed to occupy the territories left by those organizations that are reintegrated and some of them are half integrated because there is a recycling of paramilitary groups from 2005 and 2007 and there is also dissent. In Colombia, there's a new political landscape linked to the next election of mayors and governors. That's why experts predict that the murders of political, social and environmental leaders will rise dramatically. The task of President Ivan Duque will be to implement the measures that the United Nations, social movements and the Obstbundmen have recommended. On February 6 marks the birth of the Cuban revolutionary and commander Camilo Cienfuegos. He was born in Havana in 1932. Cienfuegos was part of the Granma expedition leading in a key event in the Cuban Revolution. He defeated Batista's dictatorship forces in Yaguajay, Cienfuegos province, and after the triumph of the revolution, he became the head of the Revolutionary Armed Forces. And now we remember Bob Marley's day. The date marks the birth of the late legendary Jamaican reggae artist. Marley's songs of revolution appeal to people of all cultures. He is ready to expose the fa and fight for the causes of the economically and politically oppressed. The reggae icon would have been 74 years old today. All pirates, yes, they rabbi. All died to the merchant ship. Minutes after they took I. From the bottom left it, but my hand was made strong by the end of the Almighty. We forward in this generation, triumphant. And like this, we go to a short break. Stay tuned. Our actions have an impact on the environment. our responsibility to change for the sake of our planet. 
let's be part of this transition. Watch, preserve, and protect your green zone. Wednesday, only on Telesur. Attacks for the withdrawal of U.S. troops in Afghanistan continues in Moscow. The controversial dialogue is being held by Taliban representatives, a delegation led by former President Ashraf Ghani and the opposition. However, the Afghan government rejects the attacks. It says the meeting is aimed to, uh, to undermine its authority in the country. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, before American uh, says uh, to us, uh, only Taliban uh, want uh, withdrawing of foreign forces from Afghanistan. But today, uh, uh, all Afghans saying we don't need uh, for foreign forces in Afghanistan, existence of foreign forces in Afghanistan. All Afghans agree all occupation forces must leave the Afghanistan as soon as possible. And thousands of teachers have protested in Tunisia to demand better working conditions and higher wages. They gather at Al Kashaba Square, close to the office of the Prime Minister Youssef Shahed. Teachers' unions are urging for a wage increase, among other demands. Meanwhile, parents are set to protest next week to demand an end to the conflict. And different cities in China have put on a spectacular displays of light and lanterns on the Spring Festival, the most important festival in the country. In the coastal city of Qingdao, a light show involving nearly 2.7 million bright colorful LED lights was projected onto the facade of city buildings, while in the city of Langfang, the lights and a lantern show illuminated the night sky. I have seen it on TV. It looks like really beautiful, more beautiful than TV. Our country has become prosperous and our lives are getting better and better. I hope our country will get richer and stronger. I brought my child here to experience the traditional Lunar New Year in the festive atmosphere. And the U.S. House of Representatives has held its first hearing on gun violence in nearly eight years. It comes a week ahead of the Florida school shooting anniversary, in which a gunman killed 17 people at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. President Donald Trump has been criticized for not mentioning gun violence in his State of the Union address. Congress has done almost nothing in recent years to address gun violence, Citizens across the country have been organizing and demanding action. As a result, several states have strengthened their gun laws. I'm disappointed that in his lengthy State of the Union address last night, President Trump did not see fit even to mention the need to protect our citizens against gun violence. But it is evident from the energy in the crowd in this room, as well as the millions of people across the country fighting for sensible gun safety laws, that the public is demanding national legislation too. And the Kremlin's spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said that British media must comply with Russia's broadcasting laws. The announcement comes after the actions of the United Kingdom against Sputnik and Russia today. Our correspondent Hans Eloro has the details. 
According to the Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Perkov, it's necessary to ensure the fulfillment of broadcasting law in Russia by the British media. This is response to the alleged harassment to the Russian media by the United Kingdom. It also evidences that the British media regulator ordered the investigation of different programs for RT. The fact repeated in many and also in April. On the other hand, the Russian media regulator Rodoskor Mansor had announced last December the inspection of the BBC. The United States promoted this based on the alleged presence of hackers during the last elections in the U.S. and also is part of the discredit campaign of discredit against Russia. Thank you, Hansel. And the figure of El Relator, the relator proposed by the Spanish government and Catalonia has sparked controversy. Some parties say Pedro Sánchez has committed high treason. Our correspondent in Catalonia, Joan Ortiz, has the details. A political storm has sparked in Madrid due to this political figure called El Relator. The political parties, Ciudadanos, Partido Popular and Vox, have called for demonstration this weekend to say to Pedro Sánchez that the figure of El Relator implies a high treason to Spain. Meetings have recently been held to resolve the political situation in Catalonia. El Relator is a mediator between the Catalan and the Spanish government. These have caused some public discontent that led to this call for demonstrations. Thank you, Joan. The President of the European Council, Donald Tusk, has slammed those who called for a Brexit without any idea of how to execute it. I've been wondering what that special place in hell looks like for those who promoted Brexit without even a sketch of a plan how to carry it safely. Tusk's statement came a day before United Kingdom Prime Minister Theresa May is due in Brussels to renegotiate the withdrawal deal. However, Tusk said the European Union will not make a new offer on Brexit. That means the United Kingdom could leave the European Union on March 29th with no deal, unless May can convince the European Union. Now let's take a look at more stories from around the world. Twin twins born in Yemen is at risk if they don't receive medical treatment abroad. Doctors have warned that the two-week-old twins will die if they remain in the country, as its health system cannot keep them alive. However, the ongoing war has forced the closure of the capital's airport, so the boys are unable to leave. Doctors are appealing to the United Nations and humanitarian organizations to help arrange the transfer of the twins. They need to travel immediately. They will not be able to survive in Yemen under the social, political and economic circumstances in this country. Thousands of teachers rallied in Al-Kasbah Square in Tunisia near the Prime Minister's office to demand better working conditions and higher salaries. Teachers' protests have been ongoing for two months and exams have reportedly been boycotted, affecting thousands of students. It's something that's led parents to condemn the conflict between the government and the education sector. Previously, teacher demands for more money and a reduction in the retirement age were rejected due to the budgetary situation. Firstly, this is the sixth demonstration which the secondary teachers are holding. Today we march towards the ministry, carrying banners and placards, asking that our demands are met. Then we went to the Al-Kasbah Square. Our main demands are educational reforms and early retirement for teachers. A market in London that serves as a hub for the Latin American community is set to be torn down and replaced with luxury flats. The market will be bought by a private developer and demolished, despite opposition from traders and residents. Even United Nations human rights experts have warned of the effects that destroying the market would have on cultural life in the area. And like this, we've come to the end of this brief, but you can read and find more of these stories on our website, telestoryenglish.net, where, of course, you can read and find opinion articles and Telesource special interviews. Stay with Telesource, connecting the global thousands. Until next time, thank you for watching.